Thanks for listening to the Lakers Fast Break Podcast, part of the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. Check out all their awesome basketball shows today at hoopheadspod.com. another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, it is sincerely appreciated. And I already got to give thank you for the thumbs up from Elton and the big heart from J. John. I know J. John has been very patient, as he told me. He's been on edge, barely getting any sleep, trying to focus on what he's doing in his life because he's so worried about whether or not the Lakers would be able to go ahead and get Andre Drummond. And you know what? Not only did the Lakers win today, they escaped in an ugly game. But, hey, it's a win. 96-93 96-93 over the Orlando Magic, 96-93. But you know what? They also got Andre Drummond as well, fought out from the Cleveland Cavaliers, went through the 72 hours of waivers, cleared the waivers, and you know what? He decided early afternoon today to go ahead and be part of the Los Angeles Lakers going forward. So it's a great sign. We get a guy in the middle who 18 points, 13 rebounds, Free throws, we'll talk about that here in a little bit as well. But you know what? We'll take it inside interior depth. We'll take it. It really hopefully will help us on the road to getting to the uh, next level in the playoffs. But here today to talk about the game and also Andre Drummond. And since we have one more spot left on the roster, what we can do with that final roster spot is a good man indeed. You got to go ahead and catch him anywhere you can on the great site that he is part of and that he runs, it is Lakerholics.com, and it is Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, again, we we escaped. It was an ugly game. was not exactly what Mr. Naismith drew up when he created, you know, the peach baskets and throwing the ball in there. But you know what? A win is a win. We're not hearing Laker Tom. Laker Tom, one of the loudest people in the world. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yes. I feel like holding a cell phone right now, but yes, I can hear you now. Hey, like you said, Gerald, it's always good to get a win. And we got some tough games coming up, starting with the Bucs on Wednesday. So uh, it's great to get this win. Hopefully, uh, we'll have a new center, new starting center by Wednesday, which would definitely help. It was one of those games that, uh, you know, it reminds me of when you get involved in a lousy movie and, and you just... You've gone halfway into it, and you don't want to just stop and not watch the rest of it because you want to know how it ends. And in our particular case, we know we've got a podcast coming up. Yes. Um, But, uh, man, it was that's like pulling teeth to watch that, watch the way the Lakers played. Um, The only thing I did like about it is they shot a lot of threes. They took a lot of threes. And, uh, you know, and even even though the results weren't pretty watching it on the court, and the the uh, the Magic obviously have some offensive woes, although they've got a couple of bright, shiny lights there that look pretty good. But uh, the defense held them under 100 points again, so, you know, it's uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, we didn't shoot well, um, and but the guys who needed to make points came through at points. Uh, Kuzma hit five threes. I think Marquise hit three threes. So we, you know, we ended up with 11 out of 40 for threes, which uh, is not a great percentage, but, it, it, but it, you know, we didn't lose the three-point battle, you know. You wanted them taking threes, you got them taking threes. Hey, listen, I think I think that you need to, the old saying goes that you can't make them if you don't take them, and uh, I'm a big believer in that. Plus, I think that players get a rhythm, you know. Uh, when you shoot, rarely shoot threes, it's, the guys who shoot one or two threes, 
are never going to get hot and really pour in. They're never going to have a game like Danny Green had the other day against us where he made eight threes. So you've got to you've got to feel like you've got to be comfortable to take that shot when you, when it's open. But you know the game was secondary to the news that uh, that Andre Drummond did sign with the Lakers. I was getting a little worried there because he was supposed to sign like at two o'clock Pacific time, and and it just dragged on and dragged on and dragged on. And I'd just written this article about sort of recreating the conversation that I was hoping that uh, Andre and the Lakers would have about what's his role going to be. You know, and the, the the idea of the article was, uh, are, is 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 he going to change the Lakers, or are the Lakers going to change because of him? And I started worrying that maybe there was some problems with exactly you know what the understanding was going to be. Drummond, I think, is a terrific addition defensively. He's not a great shot blocker, but he's a two hundred and eighty pound guy. He's Seven fairly, feet tall. We'll take it. He's fairly. He's six ten. But he's fairly, you know, he he has he leads the league in in steals for a center, one point yeah. six steals per game, which means that he can move around and so forth. I think the big criticism of him defensively is that uh, he doesn't especially want to play defense. He wants to play offense. He wants to he wants to get the ball at the elbow. He wants to get the ball in the low post. He wants to score a lot of points. Uh, he wants a lot of touches. And, you know, you, you've got to balance that, the, the needs of the player and the needs of the team. He's coming to the Lakers so he can get a big contract this summer when the yes. Lakers want him because they want to win a championship. So there has to be a balance, a median of minds that's got to be developed. And, and I'm hoping that, you know, I, and I'm pretty confident that the Lakers would not, it's similar to the Dwight Howard situation in my mind that, that if he's going to do, if he's going to join the Lakers, the Lakers made it clear what his role was going to be. He was going to be the third option on this team. Yeah, he's not going to be the first or second option because you got LeBron James and Anthony Davis filling those roles. Yeah. So I'm, you know, I'm pretty positive that it, it's going to be a good feel. The only thing that concerns me, honestly, is the next two to three weeks when we don't have AD or LeBron in the lineup. <laughs> you know, that's that's opportunity time for. Uh, well, that is opportunity time for Andre Drummond, but yeah. you also got to remember he's been out several weeks now, as right. far as is concerned. So he's going to be not in the best of shape. So hopefully, it's gonna we take him time and slowly. acclimate it to the offense. Yeah, and yeah. acclimate it to the offense. I mean, you can't pop him in there for thirty to thirty-five minutes already right. and expect the kind of uh, output that you are. But again, it is a step but in the right need, direction. But we need his help. We need his help over the next couple of weeks. Yes. So we don't end up too deep where we can't come back once AD comes back and LeBron comes back, and yeah. we don't want to end up in the play-in tournament. But I'd start him with 20 to 25 minutes and go from there and see what yeah. you got. Uh, and then, you know, if he can handle it, give him more. Free throw shooting, you got to be patient with him. He's yeah. only a 60% free throw shooter at best. So we are going to have those days like Shaq is where, you know, where you foul a lot, him a lot and he's going to see the line a lot and he's going to miss a lot of free throws. It's just going to be that simple. Right. But then again, you're getting tremendous rebounding on both the offensive and defensive end. You're going to get someone who can steady your interior, be a little bit quicker than Marcus Saul, I think, is, and that's a step up right there for you right there. And then, of course, the thing that you can do is pick and roll. I've seen him as far as it's concerned, do very well in that situation. And of course, I saw him mm-hmm. on the inside if he's got a smaller man on him as what happens in the switching defense of these days where all these defenses out there in the NBA, they're always switching. So you always find yourself in a mismatch. So if he gets in a mismatch, he can go ahead and post up and create some mismatches there. So that's something you actually want to go ahead and utilize as best you can. And when LeBron and AD come back, a lot of high-low action could be in order for the team. Well, the big concern is that Andre is is a – is not a great offensive player. Tends to have tunnel vision. He tends to miss a lot of bunnies. He's not a good lob dunker. He's not a great pick and roll finisher. Now, the one thing that's perhaps different is when you when you spend your entire career. He's twenty seven years old, so he's got he's 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 got seven eight seasons where basically he was playing with the Detroit Pistons and the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. So that's a whole different thing. You're playing for stats usually when yeah. you're playing on a team like that. And now he's going to be playing in a different situation with the Lakers. And so you hope, you know, especially with the leadership that you get from LeBron and AD, Frank Vogel and the whole organization that 
this is an opportunity, I think, for uh, this is an opportunity for Dre to show everybody in the league what he could really do if he was on a championship caliber team. I think we're going to see the best version of Andre Drummond. So uh, and that's right the reason I think he's coming to the Lakers, you know. So you've already got Dre already, man. You already got the. You've already got his abbreviations already, Dal Pat. Look at you. Look at you. You've already. Well, just, you know, he's I, already. The, the I'm not. I was dry not one of the people. I was not one of the big proponents of him coming along, and in fact, I, I was more positive I, than you are on it. I might have. I might have preferred uh, Boogie. Just because of the ability to shoot from outside and stretch the floor. But both um, you and uh, Jamie Sweet both asked to have Boogie over Drummond. I picked yeah. Drummond because of the fact that I thought a little bit more on the interior is what we needed as far as the points and the paint. If he can slow any of that down, I think that's something mm-hmm. that needs to be worked on because I know that's been an issue of theirs. You're right. Do the well, Lakers- we need size. But I thought Boogie, by the same token, I thought Boogie's size. Our problem is, is, is not even that. Gasol is basically like a like a tree in there, and, and by a tree I mean he doesn't move. <laughs> you know, all you have to do is go around him to get to the basket. Cousins, I think, is be much better than that, and I think that Drummond can be a lot better than that. And especially if you know he's coming to a team where defense is first, yeah, and he's going to be he's going to be required by his peers and his coaches to play defense. And if he goes out and does that, and and basically creates the best version of who Andre Drummond could be, I think he'll he'll get a bigger payoff for that than having a bunch of empty stats from going to another team. He's never played on a championship caliber team or even a contending team. Yeah. And so this is this is an opportunity to get a whole different view for him. And uh I just hope that it works out, you know, I mean, because there's obviously some conflicts there, you know, how much are the Lakers going? I don't think the Lakers should change what their particular style of play is, either offensively or defensively. However, there will be some situations, like you said earlier, where there's mismatches and you want to take advantage of them. He's not the kind of guy that really takes great advantage of mismatches because he's not really a, his shot selection is not really very careful. You know, Retackle, just, well, I want to, I want to just go ahead and, and read Tacklin uh, added a comment. There's no way Cousins is a better rim protector than Gasol. I don't think both are great rim, uh, rim protectors at this stage of their career. Obviously, uh, injuries no, have affected both. Are. Injuries have affected both at this right. point in time. So, I mean, when it comes to – if we were talking about rim protectors, we would have waited for Hassan Whiteside to be bought out. I think that probably would have been the best yeah. of alternatives specifically on that med, on that point. But Cousins got waived by the worst team in the NBA, and no one has picked up, which is something I would probably. Well, they're add waiting as for well. Drummond. They're waiting for Drummond. Now he's going to get picked up. He's going to get picked up by the by the Boston Celtics. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see what happens again. Uh, Demarcus Cousins still available out there, and I think he would be a nice addition. But here today, also as well with us, is a good man indeed. You got to see what he's going ahead and commenting at Lakerholics.com. It is L Rob and L Rob. I'm sorry about again about your Michigan State. I mean, Laker Tom and I with USC oh, and UCLA, UCLA. Uh, fight on Trojans, fight on. Yeah. But I, I will say impressive, this: impressive showing by the Pac-12. Uh, those Mobley brothers are killer. That's all I was just saying. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, leave that. Fun. I'll leave that there. But this is Raphael from NBADraftJunkies.com, and you are listening to the Lakers Fast Break. Hey, hoop heads, we all hate ankle sprains, and they happen way too often. Ankle injuries are the number one sports-related injury. Arise is trying to change that. With the iFast, your athletes get preventative protection and full mobility. Athletes no longer need to wear bulky braces that limit performance and give mediocre protection. Anyone playing sports should be using these products. Keep your athletes in the game. Don't wait for them to get hurt to take action. Visit www.arise.com, spelled A-R-Y-S-E, and use the code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off the future of performance. That's A-R-Y-S-E dot com with promo code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off. When it comes to what we're talking about with Andre Drummond, your thoughts about him joining the Lakers? 
Oh huh, man, that's you've seen on, you've seen Andre play a lot in, in for the years. Andre of play a lot. Andre is the kind of guy when he's playing against an inferior opponent, he dominates. When he's playing against somebody better than him, he doesn't. It doesn't go well. So I mean, I wish I had better a better uh, feedback on him, but yeah, that was that was his mo here. Um, right. A lot of his numbers seemed like they were empty. I think he's. I mean, he's talented. He was always forced to do more than I think he was capable of doing um, in Detroit, I thought. And I don't think he really improved a whole lot as far as his, you know, offensive skill set. He's a tremendous rebounder, though. He's a, he's yeah. a tremendous rebounder. And, I mean, he can he can score around the basket. He's got quick hands. He's got, he can move his feet. You know, so he, he's, he's, he's definitely an upgrade. We can use him. Thank yeah. you. I mean, I'm certainly happy to see him play, but... I just don't want people to think, okay, we got this, you know, tremendous all-star player. And, uh, you know, I think his numbers are usually a little bit better than his um, game. But it's nice to see that the Lakers are picking up someone in his mid-20s, 27, 28, as opposed to someone that's on the back end of the career or seen way too many injuries like on Brooklyn. I mean, uh, although, I, again, I, I still think that he was sandbagging it. Uh, you know, it looks like very much uh, Griffin is playing, you know, somewhat near – the level that he was playing with the Clippers, maybe 70% of what he was playing with the Clippers, but certainly a lot better than what he was playing with, with the Pistons, because he, you know, he did, he wasn't dunking with the Pistons. He's certainly putting a lot more effort now. Could it be because he's on a winning team perhaps, but you have LaMarcus Aldridge going there and we don't know how much he has left in the tank after a disappointing season in San Antonio. So I mean, at least right now, of the individuals that are out there on the marketplace that that have gotten bought out, I think he's probably one of the best options that are out there for the team because, like you said, L. Rob, it's all about rebounding. Yeah, no, I, I have no doubt about that. Uh, the Brooklyn matchup, I mean, the B- Brooklyn pick pickups don't even move the, the needle for me. I mean, Blake, um, yeah, stick a fork in him. Blake doesn't have a whole lot left. Um, he's a three-point shooter. I mean, he, he can create, um, but no, I, I mean, it doesn't fear. I don't fear that pickup. Denver pickups, on the other hand, you know, that was pretty impressive picking up Gordon. And um, so, I mean, I like what Denver was able to do. Don't uh, forget JaVale. Don't forget JaVale. Well, legit, yeah. JaVale can come in and give you four or five minutes. He'll give you one alley-oop, but those three bonehead plays that he'll make. <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens with that because he was playing very well in Cleveland before he was traded. They were showcasing him and he was uh, actually doing quite well for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So we'll see if that momentum picks up. I'm not as high on Aaron Gordon as some others are. I think he's okay, but I just don't think he's, uh, you know, something that's going to get Denver over the top. But we'll see what happens with that. I want to go ahead and touch. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, and in comparison, though, to, to what the Nets got. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. But then, you know, the, the Nets got them for, for basically, you know, essentially pocket change yeah. compared to what Denver had to trade. Now, Denver did win that trade, I would say, over Orlando because I think Orlando undersold Aaron Gordon, but that's another story. And you can just check out my thoughts on, on that at the NBA trade deadline special that Laker Tom and I, to so much success. I mean, again, thank you so much for listening to that show. We've had a tremendous feedback on that, so we cannot thank you enough for watching and listening to that. Want to again give special love out there to Bree Marco, J. John Sarceda, and also as well Elton Barrios. Once again, it's the Lakers Fast Break, part of the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. Please go ahead and catch all the great shows that they have on hoopheadspod.com. And then also catch these guys right here at the best place to go for Lakers fans. That is Lakerholics.com. Uh, once again, the Lakers escaped. It was an ugly game, but they did win 96 to 93. Kuzma. Shot the ball a lot, you know, got it 21 points. Schroeder, uh, Dennis Schroeder with 24, and Montrez Harrell, another efficient game. I wish the Lakers could go ahead and give them some consistent help because it seems like a lot is put on their shoulders. But Laker Tom, before I get back to the subject of buyouts and who might still become available for that last spot for the Lakers, let's touch on today's game for real quick. I want to go ahead. It was an ugly game, but Laker Tom, what are your thoughts when you see such a lack of uh, assistance or help from outside of those big three right now? I mean, THT even had a lousy game. Well, I think the problem is that, is as we've said several times, that the Lakers roster was built around 
Anthony Davis and LeBron James. They weren't, and we don't really have that third player. You know, this is why we go through this thing every every month of the last couple of years is who is the third player? Is the third player our defense? Is the third player the group of players that we have and so forth? And all of those are really excuses for not having a third guy who can really be counted on to give you 20 points a game or 10 assists, 10 assists per game and so forth. And it was a also mixed in with that is a, not a great three-point shooting team. And we lack volume three-point shooters, although Kuzma tonight was trying to prove that he was a volume three-point shooter. But those, those deficiencies on the team basically haven't been fixed. And they're the things that I worry most about with this team moving forward, especially when you go up against a team like Brooklyn that's got three superstars. Because in the playoffs, superstars are what are going to carry the team. And we're going to need both of our superstars to be fully healthy and playing at the top of their game. And sometimes that's hard to do if you're just starting off again after a big layoff and you've got to sort of ramp yourself up to that level. So the truth is what we see is what we've got. We don't have a team that can survive and really be successful without LeBron and AD unless they're playing against a terribly inept offense. And fortunately, we've had two straight games in a row against terribly inept offensive teams. Yeah. Um, and what we do do well is, with the one exception of not having a rim protector, is we play pretty good solid defense, you know, and we hustle. And we've got some guys that can attack the basket in the, in Dennis and, and Trez who are are excellent players, you know. I find it, I have a problem with Trez and with Dennis in that the turnovers are just killers, man. I mean, you can't shoot 30% from deep and turn the ball over and have a turnover ratio under two, a turnover to assist a turnover ratio under two and be a championship starting point guard. And the problem with Trez is that of all of the people, I mean, you can feel bad for Mark because he's probably going to at some point in time be a DMP every game. But Trez is the one that really bothers me because he can't play next to Drummond, which is one of the reasons I was really not in favor of Drummond as the choice. You can't put Trez and Drummond on the floor, especially with a team that doesn't have any three-point shooters to start with, because we're going to be playing 1950s basketball against the modern NBA. And if you if you look at this, I mean, Trez is playing 25 minutes a game. Mark is playing 20 minutes a game. Dre is playing 28 minutes a game. You add those up, it's like 70 minutes a game. Yeah. Well, there's only 48 minutes in the dang game, man. So what's going to happen? At some point, Dre is going to be paying 30 minutes a game as a starter on this team. Once he gets the thing we're going along, that's going to leave 16 to 18 minutes a game left. And you're going to have Anthony Davis coming back. So there's going to be no time for Marcus Hall, period. He's going to set every single game. He's not going to play at all. And Trez is going to be down to 15, 16 minutes. And that's if Andy, that's if Anthony Davis doesn't even play the five. Because the only person he can play with is going to be Anthony Davis. So we've got a real problem with the minutes at center. And this was one of the big negatives that I felt about. This is why I felt so much better about getting Boogie as the center, because Trez could play with him. Because they're don't they both not playing in the same sandbox. One guy can stand out there and fire away three pointers, or the other guy, well, Trez does his thing in the key. So it's it's going to be a real hurdle figuring out because the biggest thing that we lose by adding Drummond is we lose all of that energy and the 20 points per game that we just discovered how to get Trez to give every game by running him with these pick and rolls. But you can't do that when you got Andre Drummond sitting down there in the key. It's, it's going to be a tough situation moving forward. It's a good lead in for the next question, you know, which is what are we going to do with that last roster spot? Well, that's what I'll ask you next, but L Rob, I wanted to go ahead and your thoughts on the game again, a very ugly win for the Lakers, but we will definitely take it. It is 96 to 93. I agree with Laker Tom. I love Dennis Schroeder's activity. I love his aggressiveness out there on the floor, but the problem is when you have a car that, can't muster enough playmaking out there to go ahead and have an assisted turnover ratio 
that's a three to one, four to five one. Five assists, three turnovers. Yeah. So if it's like almost one to one, that's not a great sign. That's not what you want to do. But I, I still like Schroeder a lot. I think he's got that dog in him that just, you know, keeps it that his aggressiveness is just just tremendous. But I want to hear your thoughts on the game. I mean, again, it comes down to you know efficiency from Montrez. Dennis just keep on with that aggression and Kuzma. He had to go ahead and put it up and put up a lot. Not an efficient game at all, but just enough to get it done. Well, in the spirit of the NCAA tournament, you just survive in advance, baby. I'm just yeah. happy we got the win. It was it was ugly. It was brutal. I mean, who do you want, guys? Who do you guys want through uh, Dennis to play make and set up? I mean, who? I mean, really, you want him to kick it out to to what Matt, to Matthews for some corner threes? You want him to? To set up Casey. Well, yeah, listen, the, the assi- you're right, you're right, you're right, El Rob. The assist are very Dennis's problem. No, hold on, Laker Tom. Let, hold on, Laker Tom. But go ahead, El Rob. You know, I mean, that's the only person that's converting when you give them the ball is yeah. Trez. The rest of those yeah. guys aren't 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 doing anything. And you know, and guys like THT and Caru and Caruso, those guys aren't, you know, spot up shooters. They're they they want to put it on the ground and, and create themselves. So I agree he has to cut down on turnovers, but, um, you know, it's hard to evaluate him with this lineup. You know, uh, if he had that same exactly. careless, exactly. carelessness with, with 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 LeBron and AD on the court, then that would be a different different story. Yeah, it's just what is backcourt this? made is part of the problem. Yeah, I would what like is to what is this? Well, yeah, I, I was going to say, what is his assist to turnover ratio without LeBron in the lineup? One may be different. So, yeah, I mean, if that's the case, then – you know, what is it with LeBron in the lineup? It's a little bit more efficient because not as much pressure is put on him to handle the ball each time. So, yeah, yeah. And, and the fact is when you have a whole bunch of, you know, bad shooters that yeah. you, you're, you're positioned to go ahead and play with, I mean, it makes it, it makes your job a lot harder. So uh, I don't want to try. He's go a great ahead. dish and drive. He's a great dish and drive player. And the problem is, is that, when I was going through all of the various trades that we could make, I didn't want to trade Schroeder and I very rarely included him in many of the trades, but what I did almost every single time was to try to trade for somebody in the backcourt who would balance Schroeder, a volume three point shooter who, you know, who he could pitch that ball out to instead of pitching it out to Caruso and pitching it out to, to, to Matthews and so forth. So That's part why of I like Fournier. Is K, KCP is, like the most horrible option at this point in time for a guard to play with Dennis Schroeder. Imagine if he was playing with Zach Levine or if he was playing with even Lonzo Ball or a half a dozen guys that we've talked about who are volume three-point shooters who you pit, drive and dish, dish pitch the ball out to those guys and it's an automatic three. And Dennis would be, you know, easily running two and a half assists per turnover instead of what's happening now. Now he's driving in and half of the time he's taking shots that are pretty wild at this point in time, just simply because there isn't anybody on the outside that he really trusts to get the ball to. Um, so it's, it's, it's the entire roster construction around him that makes Dennis impossible for the Lakers to keep unless they were to rectify those other situations. Get a shooting guard who could really be a dead-eye killer, outside shooter, shooting seven, eight threes a game a guy that when he drives in or get a center that he could do all of the time. I mean, half of the time he's playing with a Gasol. <laughs> Give Gasol the ball right underneath the basket and nothing's going to happen. He's going to pass it out because he knows he can't jump. And and the best that you hope is he gets fouled and gets a couple of free throws. So, you know, it, it's the entire roster construction and the lack of three-point shooting, the lack of, of you know, it's it's not entirely Dennis's fault. And Dennis could be a starter on this team and maybe worth 20 million in my mind. I don't see him worth 25 million under any circumstances. Well, it's just, I think it's when it comes to Dennis Schroeder, you're right. I, I was hoping that they would get someone like Evan Fournier that would be the, on that wing that could get, uh, you know, the, at least that would put up a lot of shots that would get your, your make you happy as far as someone putting seven, eight threes up a game, because he certainly loves to do that. Right. I would have loved to have seen him on the team if that's the case. Well, he'd, or, he'd do better even with LeBron and AD in the lineup. Norman so you Powell, realize Norm, that he's playing Norm, without his two superstars. Norman Powell, seeing what he was traded for, uh-huh. I think uh, I would have. Victor Oladipo. 
Uh, no, not Victor. Moving on from Victor Holland. Oh, baloney, baloney, man. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Victor Oladipo. You're not going to sell me on Victor Oladipo. Yeah, I haven't read a single article that said that uh, the Rockets won that trade. Oh no, I, 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 well the Rockets. <laughs> You're kidding the Rockets, me. Miami well, okay. got a steal uh, getting him for Ole Nick. I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that it wasn't a steal, as I indicated on our last podcast. But when it comes well, to Victor, you'll Oladipo, be sorry because we're going to probably run into him at some point in time in the next. You gave, you gotta, we play okay. Miami in a couple Let weeks. Let me ask you this. Do you want Norman Powell, 43% shooting through 20 points a game, three-point line, or do you want 20 points a game from Old Depot, but shooting on many, many, many more times as a 31% three-point I'd take shooter. either one of them instead of KCP, wow, okay, Dennis Schroeder, and THT. Well, okay, that's that's beside the point, okay? If you were saying that's uh, – yes, T, I would have taken either over that. I'll give you that. I but mean, I would have I loved Low, Kyle Lowry, I mean. Yeah, I, again, I that was a mistake. But again, that you know that we can I, keep you know, on I'm I'm a founder on I'm a founder of THT Island, and yet yes, I still I would have pulled the trigger on that trade. Well, again, they we didn't happen, so <laughs> it still leaves us yeah. with one roster spot. We're right near the hard cap, but we're not on it yet. We still have room for one more individual that we could sneak. Like it would just get us right up against the hard cap, I believe. Is that correct? I was looking at Bobby Marks. Yeah, the, anybody you it's sign Twitter. is is only going to be charged against us. The most they'll be charged against us is a million five. Five hundred seven, five to seven hundred thousand. A million six. It's the it's the two year veteran minimum pay is okay. charged against the team, and the NBA itself pays any additional amounts he gets if he's a six year veteran or a seven year veteran or eight year veteran. Well, I'm seeing what they. I we got 1.9 million free, and we can spend 1.6 million to get somebody like Otto Porter Jr. Okay, because uh, I know Bobby Marks was saying something a little bit less than that, but that's okay. I mean, it's again, we're we're right up against the caps, so, but we do have the one slot, a roster slot open. L. Rob, I want to turn it over to you real quick before we head on out, my friend. There is that roster spot available. I mean, I saw a player tonight. In tonight's game, I was hoping would have been on that buyout market already in Otto Porter Jr., someone who I would have loved as a wing to go ahead and, and just fill it up as far as on the defensive and offensive end, and somebody who is not afraid, like Laker Tom is so happy and looking for, for someone that would go ahead and put up a lot of three-pointers. He would certainly fit the bill, and actually one time was very efficient at it, so you never know. He could refine that stroke. But who out there are you hoping gets bought out that maybe the Lakers could go ahead and fill that last – roster spot with l rob did i lose you you know what while we get l rob back laker tom do you have an idea on who you're still looking out there for as far as the last roster spot is concerned well i i think it's pretty simple that, that the lakers have come out and said that they're looking for a three and d wing and if you look at the guard situation we've got five guards and and we've got four guys who are mainstays on the guards in kcp and Schroeder as the starters and and THT and Caruso coming off of the bench. So there's not any minutes available really for anything other than backing up LeBron and, and, you know, in the small forward area. So I think, I think that they're looking for somebody like Otto Porter Jr. The other thing is that they've got until April 7th to still pick up people from the buyout market, because that's the date. If you sign them before April 7th, they're eligible for the playoffs. And so it's uh, that's a date that the Lakers may hold off and see if anybody else comes along. You know, I, th- I think it'll be interesting. I don't think if, if they can't sign, if they could sign Porter right now, I think they'd take him. But if they can't sign Porter, then they'll just sit there and wait. They're not going to bring in a guard. They're not going to sign Avery Bradley. They're not going to sign Isaiah Thomas. They're definitely not going to sign another center. So it, it's, it's going to be out of Porter Jr. or wait until another, you know, maybe – they just need another wing defender, basically. That's the only place where they've got any playing time really available. We're signaling the ref for a quick timeout, but we'll be back with more of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show 
and the PCC Multiverse. People are just losing their minds trying to consume Marvel products right now, and I don't blame them. This is some of the best entertainment you can get on TV and big screen right now. If something's going to be successful or not, they look at the mentions, they look at the likes, they look at the retweets and the tweets and the subtweets and the tweet tweets, and they look at all of that to say, okay, this is actually going to garner a lot of attention. Is it going to be enough, though? I think the fish out of water syndrome might be enough for somebody like us because it's going to be hilarious to watch two stoner kids we saw barely make it through high school now live in a society that they fully don't understand because they've been stuck in a decade and never came out of it facebook stars not ninja stars okay i know how some people take things literally so don't throw ninja stars at us but like the facebook stars click on those that's what we want that's the pop culture cosmo show and the pcc multiverse Catch our shows on Worldwide Radio seven days a week and wherever you get your podcasts. I want to go ahead and say thank you for the thumbs up to Cornelio and Delbert, along with everybody else who's watched us today. We've had a lot of uh, fans actually show up, and we truly appreciate you listening and watching. Oh, Rob is here now. It was so funny (laughs) because you were so stoic. And I thought you were just, you know, intently listening. We didn't know you were like, frozen. Well, I didn't know. I, th- I thought Laker Tom was talking so much that L. Rob was just so entranced by it. But then I realized, hey, that's a freeze frame right there for the past five minutes. So, yes. L. Rob, we're back with you right now. Is there anybody out there or hopefully on the horizon as far as the buyout market is concerned mm-hmm. that you think that could fill that niche as far as that last roster spot? And before you say that, I want to give you the exact numbers because I know Laker Tom was talking about it. According to Bobby Marks from ESPN, the contract for Andre Drummond in Los Angeles is the amount of $794,536 that he gave back in his buyout with the Cleveland Cavs. The Lakers will also have a $554,988 cap hit, and the Lakers are $954,349 below the hard cap and have enough room to sign a 15th player. So with that in mind, they still have the room to sign a 15th player with, you know, for that $900,000. So I want to hear your thoughts on who that might be. Well, yeah, I had a freeze frame. So before I comment on that, never pass up a chance to get a nice musical reference in. So nice shout out to Jay Giles band. With the freeze, freeze frame. frame. There you go. I think I should do that every time Laker Tom talks. I should just go and have a freeze frame. I'll just put up there, you know, go like, yes, right there, something like that. Um, I, I, I wish I had some somebody that I had in mind that I thought would be a good pickup that we can have. Four letters. <laughs> really, there's nobody I can think of that's going to fit the bill that's out there right now that what we're looking for. So okay. I think uh, we just got to hope that somebody will get you know, somebody will get uh, let go, bought out in the next uh, week or two. I know uh, you guys are going to freak out when I say this, but the name Austin Rivers is being bandied about in Lakers land. Your thoughts on that? I see some head shaking going on, so I'm assuming no. it's going to be. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an interesting and a good player, but yeah. I don't. He's, so he's gonna who's who's going to lose? Who's going to lose playing time? We just turned down the trade of the mm-hmm. century for THT. Yeah, Caruso is the wing. is the bench goat, and we got two starters, and he's not going to start over KCP. Although he'd be a big improvement, he's not going to start over KCP or Dennis Schroeder. We don't have minutes at guard. Yeah, he was he was released by what team? He uh, got traded to I believe Oklahoma City from the Knicks because he was bench warmer there in the Knicks, yeah. and yeah. he got traded to Oklahoma City. And in a, in the to I guess to hard to have time to play when your dad's not the coach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gerald, well, go ahead. yes, L. Rob. You just said it all. He was not playing with the Knicks, so I mean, if he if he couldn't play with the Knicks, then that would not bode well if he could get some significant playing. It's not like they have a who's who of uh, guards over there in New York. So, yeah, I mean, Austin Rivers, nah, um, that's going to be a, a hard no for me. You know what? You know what's interesting is that everybody. I saw these numbers where that the trade deadline actually ended up with more players being traded than any other year, and then then they went in and they showed me the numbers on the trade on the buyout market, and the buyout market this year is the biggest buyout market in the history of the league. Wow. There have been so many players that have been released and entered the buyout market. 
And we still have all the way till April 7th before that you can still get anybody that's bought out by then and still play them in the playoffs. So the Lakers, you know, Palinka's hoping that this buyout market can wipe out all of the bad taste from the trade deadline market. And well, yeah. But again, and planning, Otto Porter, and planning Drummond is a is a hell of a good start. I don't think it was a good sign that Otto Porter Jr. played today for Orlando because of the fact that he is playing for Orlando, which means Orlando is interested in keeping him. If they, you know, if they're playing him, they took the time to go ahead and give him a jersey. That means they're going to probably play him maybe even through the rest of the season. So that doesn't bode well for people well, out there. But they're also they're also tanking. Yeah, they're also in a full tank where they they want to increase the opportunity, and it's not it's a tank that's not necessarily related to the next draft. It's the fact that somebody owns their draft pick, but it's top four protected, and so they they want to make sure that they fall far enough in there so that draft pick is in the top four, so they won't lose it. So that's yeah. why they're tanking. Um, but... And so so he's there's a good chance he'll get he'll, he'll get cut. Well, they ran the wow. last play of the game for him too, so it was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, wow. Okay, he's he's not only not getting cut, but we're running the the play to tie the game for him. So <laughs> yeah, so that was a very disheartening. Well, to he hit see that, that one three. That was a great three that he hit earlier. That you know was, and that's well what done. he could do. He can fill it up. At one time, he was a forty percent yeah. free point like shooter. Guys will only shoot threes. You know, at yeah. least at least you have a hope that they'll be high volume. Yeah, so we'll he's a 40 percent career three point shooter. Yeah, and we'll wait and see how that works out. Again, I'd love to see Otto Porter Jr. be someone that the Lakers could pick up. Is there someone out there that you think is going to reach the buyout market that the Lakers would be interested in? We want to hear your thoughts, whether it's J. John or whether it's everyone else. We just truly appreciate it. Bree, you've been so great. Cornelio, Delbert, Elton, we cannot thank you enough. Salamat from all of us here at the Lakers Fast Break. We truly appreciate it. But before we head on out, guys, I know you both are – uh, with L Rob, with your great comments, but also as well, Laker Tom. And in fact, L Rob, you're still above me in our fantasy league. So don't think I don't know that young man, but you're still doing very well there. Although we're both, we're losing right now. I think you're second and I'm third, but Laker yeah, Tom. I, I, within a, I think I creeped within a game of first place. So there you go. There you go. All right. Sounds good. And hopefully I'm not too far behind, not too far behind, but before we head on out guys, it is Lakerholics.com. Want to go ahead and make sure everybody knows that's the best place to go if you're a Lakers fan. Please be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. And Laker Tom, I know you're working on some articles like you had mentioned earlier. What else you got planned for this week at Lakerholics.com? Well, I want to. I want. I want to try to. Uh, I'm in the middle of writing something about Trez because I just feel so bad for the guy because he took a discount to come to the Lakers. Um, looking you know, looking for an opportunity to get a little revenge on the Clippers and so forth. And the first half of the season, you know, he was only averaging like 14 points a game and down from the 20 points per game when he won the sixth man of the year award. And, you know, still suffering from the loss of his grandmother and and just, you know, terrible ravaging of his family by the COVID situation. And then we start the second half of the season and we all of a sudden, you know, finally start running the guy in the in the pick and rolls which is his bread and butter and he's been producing great his energy is great he's he's a guy that every single person who watches he's the reason to watch these horrible laker games that we've been watching you know it's been montrez he's been the primary thing that i've enjoyed watching the games and i'm just worried that we're gonna he's gonna become very difficult for him to get playing time with Andre Drummond coming along. So I'm looking at different ideas of, of ways, you know, I mean, he's, he's basically, uh, he's basically a five, you know, everybody keeps trying to, because he's only six, seven to turn him into a four, but the truth is he's a small ball five. And, uh, and I'd like to, you know, he has to play with AD and, and yet we, we, our formula for the championship is AD at center with a, stretch four next to him and that's not Trez. So what can we do to not lose the firepower and the energy that Trez brings to the team? You know, I think that's a big challenge. And and if there's any challenge that the coaching staff should be working on right now for the Lakers, for the rest of the regular season and heading into the playoffs, it's how do we continue to take advantage of, 
of the great energy and scoring ability that Trez brings to the table. Well, we'll see what happens, but please check out Laker Tom's awesome articles at medium.com under Laker Tom or be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com where L Rob hangs his hat every now and then. And before we head on out, my friend, what are you looking forward to this week, which starts this Wednesday against the Milwaukee Bucks? I'm just you, you, I'm looking forward to seeing Drummond in a in the purple and gold and uh, see what he can bring. I mean, if somebody listens to this podcast, they they probably say, "Boy, these Laker guys." Boy, I tell you, they just got Andre Drummond for nothing, and they still complaining and harping and whining. So, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we we are spoiled. Um, Drummond's a great pickup, and I'm just looking forward to seeing him out there. See how they uh, incorporate him in, in into the offense and. Um, yeah, I'm not as worried about Trez as as um, LT. I think I mean uh, coaches. The coaches will figure it out. I mean, Trez is something valuable, and 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 playoffs are all about matchups, and you need to have as many different uh, playing styles as possible to to um, to hoist the to Larry O'Brien Trophy. So having Trez there, having Drummond option there, you know, they, they'll figure it out. As a healthy Lakers team, I'll be excited to see it going to be brutal until we get the butt guys back, but maybe Drummond can come in and help hold down the fort in the meantime. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I also want to give an update to Anthony Davis, who's been given clearance to do more on court activities within recent days. So that's a promising sign. No word yet on when he's actually coming back to the lineup, but at least he's back out on the court practicing as far as whether it's him, whether it's limited one-on-one or, you know, just at least, you know, out on the court, doing some work, doing some running, doing some leg work, getting some more time uh, uh, you know, on the court once again. So he's on the way to getting back on the court, hopefully sooner rather than later. But we just want him at 100%, you know, especially with him you know, as fragile as he is, and he is fragile, which is the reason why he signed the extension. Right now, we're just hoping that he can come back as healthy. So take as much time as you need to come back strong, to come back healthy. And, of course, LeBron hopefully will be coming back not too much after that. So we'll see what happens. But, again, Andre Drummond is now a member of the Los Angeles Lakers. He brings 18 points, 13 rebounds, and almost two steals a game to the Lakers. So hopefully we can get that. Maybe a little bit of shot blocking as well. So we'll see what happens. But it all starts for us this Wednesday. I might try to sneak in another podcast this week. We'll see what happens. But it all starts for us for sure this Wednesday right to here at the Lakers fast break. Again, we are part of the hoop heads podcast network. Please check out all the great stuff that they're doing at hoopheadspod.com. Of course, Lakerholics.com. If you have any questions for us, if you have any questions for L Rob, go ahead and hit us up through Lakerholics.com. Laker Tom at Laker Tom on Twitter. We're at Lakers fast break on Twitter and Lakers fast break at yahoo.com. Or you can just hit us up on social media on the Lakerholics group on Facebook or Lakers fast break on our Facebook page where you're catching us right now. And again, I noticed in the past few or three or four podcasts that we've been doing, we've gotten a substantial increase in viewers and we, this, this does not go unnoticed by us. And I want to say from my heart that, you know, we, you know, just basically we've got so much love for you. We've gotten responses again from all over the world, Canada, Jordan, the Philippines, Singapore and you know from my friends in the Philippines out there Salama we've got much love for you thank you so much wherever you're at listening and watching to us right here at the Lakers fast break we know you're like us that you bleed purple and gold and we cannot thank you enough for taking some time out of your day to checking us out and yes even listening to Laker Tom all right once again it is the Lakers you knew I had to get a shot in there, but I, I got nothing but love for you, Laker Tom. L. Rob and I, we've got nothing but love for you, LT. But L. Rob, it's been so great having you here. Laker Tom, it's been so awesome having you here. Once again, the Lakers did sneak out. It was not the prettiest game in the world. Two in a row. Two, two in, in a row. row. Winning streak. Winning streak. Was it Jamie Admiral Akbar that said that's not a winning streak? He doesn't consider that a winning streak. Well, that's a winning streak to me. I'll take two in a row. Everything I'll, I'll take two in a row. Too. Amen. I'll two. You know, it takes two to make a thing go right. Okay, I won't go sing that. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't want to scare anybody. But last comments of the day, Jay John Cerceda, uh says Brooklyn's nuts. He, they have no defense. The Lakers are going to eat them. Now, again, if their Lakers are fully healthy, they've got the best defense in the NBA, and they can match up with anybody. 
but he says right now the Lakers are going to eat them. Imagine LBJ, A. Davis, Anthony Davis, Andre Drummond, the Beast Harrell, Caruso together on the floor as a defensive unit. Well, we'll see if that happens, but I truly appreciate, J. John, your love for us. You can sleep now, my friend. You can rest now. Now that the Lakers have Andre Drummond in the fold, you can get some sleep on behalf of all of us here at the Lakers Fast Break. Get some rest. And for everybody out there that was worried what we weren't going to get him, well, he is now a member of the Los Angeles Lakers. That is Andre Drummond. So we're hoping for some great things. And once again, the Lakers did win 96 to 93 on a two game winning streak. Sorry, Jamie. Two game winning streak. That's what I'm going to say. And I'm proud of it. We'll take it any way we can get it. We will definitely be here Wednesday. Might sneak uh, another show beforehand, but we'll definitely be here Wednesday after the game right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.